day three, October 7th. For this evening's hunt, we're gonna make our first attempt on the buck that we've nicknamed the Bladed 10. And somewhere along the way, over these next, well, who knows how long it's gonna to take to kill this deer, but the whole story of this deer will come out. So I'm not gonna to try to lay it out every single time we go after him, but we do have a lot of history with this deer. He was a, he was a deer that he must like to fight because he was really tore up back in 2017. We thought he was gonna die, but uh, he pulled through and here he is still uh, kicking on the farm, about the same size he was in 2017. 10 pointer, just a solid buck, uh, at least a five year old deer, he might be six. The spot we're going to tonight is a location where I had uh, daylight pictures of that deer probably as recently as about 10 days ago, roughly. He was uh, popping out at least an hour before the end of legal shooting time. And you know that if he sticks with that pattern, it should work pretty well this evening because the wind is perfect for hunting there. We need a west wind. This little small plot is right off the side of the road. Park along the road, walk down the road, and then work up through the timber. I can come into the very north end of the plot, right on the east edge of it. So it sets up really well for sneaking in and out. The deer rarely, rarely do we ever bump anything going in. The deer just don't know that we're there. And at the end of legal shooting time, we can slip right down the trunk of the tree and back out through the timber. And it's such a small uh, plot. It's only less than an acre in size. So anything that comes out in there will usually end up within bow range. So that's the hope for this evening on the bladed 10. Uh, if we don't get him tonight, we might be staying away from that spot for a little while because the wind is supposed to switch. West, northwest, southwest, they work really well for this spot, but it's supposed to be mostly straight out of the south and the southeast after tonight. So we'll try it and then uh, we'll have to make a new game plan if we can't get him tonight. Real Trees Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, Drake Non-Typical, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, and Realtree. We got settled into the stand. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this spot quick. It's planted to Frigid Forage Big and Beastie, but it's the type of area being completely secluded back in the timber where the deer come out at all times of the day. So it, it never lasts very long. The deer don't let it grow very well. And uh, there's never a bountiful crop of anything in this food plot because it's small and secluded. In fact, just to prove our point, about 10 minutes after we got up in here, there was two does down in there feeding just on the lower end of the plot. And normally I'd be you know, I'd be getting ready to take a shot at, it was 27 yards, but I don't want to spook a bunch of stuff here before that buck could possibly come out. If one of those does would have spotted us and started to get spooky, then I definitely would have tried a shot. But as it was, they did pick up a little bit of our scent. Well, like I said at the truck, we, we don't have a lot of choices as far as this coming next few days of being able to hunt this spot but we probably should have gone someplace else just to be on the safe side i don't like hunting my best spots or my best box when the wind is light and variable because you can't predict where it's going to go so while we're waiting here uh, drake did hunt yesterday afternoon on my farm he hunted one of my another one of my plots very similar to this one a little small spot secluded back in the timber so we'll jump to that hunt from last night and then we'll come back to the tree here in just a bit
first deal of the year down. Probably less than 10 minutes in the stand. Trying to get my bow set up. She comes in 20 yards, perfect shot. Smoked her, she was she was hurt when she ran off the field, so that's awesome. As you guys can see, they're just tearing this pot apart. It's half the reason why I wanted to get in here early is because we knew they were in here all the time. It's secluded, I think they're in here all day, so. Pretty pumped about it. We're gonna settle in and hopefully no doe makes your way out. exact same steps that other doe did but didn't even run 15 yards feels good let the first two arrows of the year fly and uh i'm gonna have to go buy some more tags because i'm out of tags for this county so we are uh we're gonna wrap it up for this hunt get these does out of here and uh probably watch some sunday night football tonight it's a good night to do that Got about 45 minutes left of legal shooting time and just had a real nice four-year-old buck come out. He's a deer that we filmed several times during the summer. A buck that I filmed the summer before, the summer of 2018 too. And if he survives, he'll be a good target for us next year. The funny thing is, I didn't think he was living anywhere near this area. I figured he was living about a half an hour about a half a mile to the east of here so it just, just kind of shows that uh you know we think we know where these deer are living but we really don't we just have a rough idea i think they move around a little bit more than what we think but it was a good sign to see a four-year-old buck on the hoof with an hour left of, of daylight so we're hoping that that bladed 10 does the same thing he'd been showing up but that's been, like I said, several days ago since I pulled the camera out of here. If you have the ability to either, you know, if you own land or if you have the ability to alter the land that you do hunt, I recommend you find these little openings like this and uh, remove any scrub brush that's in there and get something planted because they're killer little spots. I mean, it's the first place that the deer are on their feet in the evenings and it's the last spot, generally, where they're on their feet in the mornings before they go to bed down. So, uh, 45 more minutes. I've got a good feeling that we're gonna see something else here pretty soon. right down to prime time. Probably about a half an hour left. So the sum total of the evening so far has been uh, those, there was actually three antlerless, antlerless deer on the road when we were walking in. I got within about 70 yards of that one. If I could have got a little bit closer, I would have tried a shot, but uh, then, the, then there was the two does that came out right in the plot and uh, that nice four-year-old, that borderline shooter four-year-old, that's gonna be a, a definite target next year. Little Spike came out here in the last oh, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, it's just gone dead still. I've been dropping these wind floaters. They just go, ooh, just really slowly down the hill. So thermals are just like water. 
they follow the terrain. So if you poured out just a massive amount of water up on top of a ridge, wherever that water would run, that's where your scent goes when there is no wind whatsoever. But that's good though, because it's taking our scent away from this food plot. So whatever comes out here in this last half hour, we're gonna bring it to you in the end of the blog here. Uh, I'm gonna hunt again the next few evenings. And then we should have some really cold temperatures coming in by the weekend. So once again, kind of like last year when I was, or last week when I was talking, you know, on the video blogs, try to schedule some good hunts towards the end of this week when that cold front is rolling through. Those are really good times to be in the stand in October. So check back again tomorrow. And uh, unless the blade of 10 comes out and we get a shot at him, this is going to be my last interview for this video blog.